Welcome to Cinerama TV, I'm Miss Kelly. Today, Papa Tom is going to be making a Cliff Dwellings Diorama. He'll be using the Cinerama Mountain Diorama Kit. Some additional things you'll need are a hobby knife, some water, and some sticks from the backyard. Now let's go over to Papa Tom and see how to make a Cliff Dwelling Diorama. We're studying our Cliff Dwelling Indians, and as you can see, we've already made our dwelling here. Learn how to build this adobe dwelling by watching Puppet Tom's adobe dwelling video. We've got our base here that we're going to be using to make our cliff. And I've already taken the liberty to draw a quick sketch of how I want the hillside to flow. So let's cut this loose right now and get this all started. Kids, be sure to ask mom or dad for help when using anything sharp such as scissors or a hobby knife. Now. We'll throw some project glue down in there. We'll embed our walls. And then we'll start taping things into position just to hold it until it can secure itself. It's time to start doing the easy part and a lot of fun here. Just taking and rolling up newspaper wads so that you can make and build up your base and give yourself some texture and some shape to your mountain. This is where it gets to be fun now is because you get to actually be the creator of the terrain that you want here. You've already got your outside edges that you want to follow. So you tape them into position. And then we'll take some of this flat area that we've got left over and wedge it into position here and build off of that. Pull this over and you can see how it's going to fit now into the side of the hill. We'll build this up over here in this area a little bit and then wanting some more newspaper up here to give it really a nice terrain look. Okay, this is looking pretty good now. Uh, let's see how it looks with the piece. It will wedge in down here. Yep, still leaves enough room to get a ladder in up there. I've got to remember that when you do the plaster cloth, to pinch it up a little bit so that the, the roof of the cliff stays up. Um, so we're just about ready for plaster cloth now. Let's set this aside and we'll get things ready for the plastering. We're ready to start the plastering now. Um, Mountain Kit has a really nice big roll of plaster cloth in it that I've taken the liberty to cut it into strips like this so that they're more manageable, easier to work with. All you have to do is make sure you have the bumpy side up first and just run it through the water. Don't let it sit in it, just run it through. Stick it down in position. Overlap it a little bit so it gives it a nice smooth edge there to work with. That way when it all dries out it'll look really pretty and then push it into your contours so that you start creating the hill that you really want to have. Take another sheet, continue right on. Did you know many historians believe that the ancestral Pueblones of the Southwest didn't start building their homes into the side of cliffs until the early 13th century, only to desert them less than 100 years later? In some areas you'll need some smaller pieces, so I'm going to take a handful of them here and just cut them in half. That way they'll be more manageable for up in the areas that you uh, find a little bit harder to get at. Allows it to be a little bit more manageable. Now it's really starting to look like something, huh? You can see all the ruggedness of the cliff and the rock where they'll be, the boulder type area here, the overhanging cliff, nice flat spot here for our uh, dwelling to be placed into. Now all we have to do is clean up our mess and let it dry, and then we can start doing the rest of the 
staining it well, putting the rocks on and things like of that nature. The next step is to make rocks for our diorama. Now, according to the directions, you take six tablespoons of the hydrocal, two tablespoons of water, and mix it up. Now make it to the consistency that you want. You might want to put a little bit more water in it. It's up to you. And now you can pour your mix into your tray. And all you have to do is wait until it dries. It'll set up in about a half hour, but to make sure that they're nice and crisp and will come out properly, give them about two hours to dry and then you can just reach to the back and pop them right out. As you can see, now they're dry and all you have to do is turn them over, twist them a little bit, and they pop right out. Now you've got your rocks and they're ready to put in place. Now there are several ways of doing it. Take a little project glue and put it on the back and you can place it into position and it can start drying. Another way of doing it is to take your X-Acto knife and cut just a little bit into it so that you can push it in where it's resisting you and take some of your strips that you had left over in your plaster cloth I cut them down into strips now and dip our strip in the water so it's a little damp and apply the strip to the back and it too will act just like the project glue does now you can continue on with taking more strips and just working them in around the edges of the rock so that it looks as though the rock was always part of it. Wasn't that easy? And you can just continue on with all the rest of the rocks as you put them in place. Did you know most cliff dwellings were built on the south facing ledges to take advantage of the low sun in the winter for heat, while the cliff overhangs provided shade from the high sun in the summer? Ah, there we go. That's looking real good now. And we'll have to let this dry and then we can come back later on and do the staining of the, the uh, rocks and painting the model of the earth tone pigments. Uh, but the rocks work on absorption so we need to let them get really, really dry before we stain them. So we'll let that dry for right now.